All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome into another Mighty Recap. My name is Marcelo, and I am mighty, and I continue to be mighty, man. Like, Jesus Christ, another big, solid, nice green day here. Like, this month is, is already bigger than my last month, and we, we're only two days into the month, which is absolutely nuts to say. I kind of feel like I'm level, leveling up a little bit on my trading journey. Because, you know, a lot of people think that when you turn the corner, that's it. You made it to the other side and now you're safe forever. The reality is that turning the corner is just a, it's just the beginning. So, you know, live trades, maybe. Watch this. This thing just held a nice pullback. And over the break of 350, I would um, I would take the trade. So we can keep that on watch. But um, here's the PNL, man. Big PNL. 2,400 bucks. Yes, it's not 12,000. Yes, it's not 5,000. But it's a respectable, solid big green day. And the reality is, if it wasn't because of those big green days I had in the last couple of days, this would be close or even my biggest green day ever. So this is something I'm not going to look down to. Definitely a big green day that I'm taking happily off the table here. The only way I trade this is the break of 50. But if not, uh, I'll try to stay focused on the recap and, and you know, uh, not get too distracted and, and not keep profits back because I've been doing a lot of that today. Um, but in any case, if anybody's new, the way the mighty recaps work is that the videos are going to be split into three, dif three different sections. First, I'm going to rant for a little bit. Then I'm going to show you all the stocks I traded, <sighs> my PL, and then I'm going to show you my live trading archives. Yes, I record all my trades every single day. Because I truly believe if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And what I like to do is after the market close, I go back to my recordings and I study what went right, what went wrong, what setups worked the best, what setups didn't, so that I can have like so that I can kind of like create a game plan for um, the next day. As this thing is creeping up here. Wait a second. All right, let's take a look at this. So what well, what I would look for the break of 350 is I want to see the ask price here on my level two get close to the 350 level and as i see buyers what the hell was that and as i see buyers coming in i buy just like that can we hold can 250 hold it's holding oh can i chase that move hmm and you saw there, I hesitated. 50 held for a long time. And I took a long time to press the buy button. So, you know, that was on me. Doing the recap, doing all this crap, speaking out loud. Throws me a little bit off my game. But let's see if we can make something happen here. Wow, this really this thing is really opening up. 375. Next level is 4. I mean, let's see if this, can, this thing can go all the way to 4. Um, you know, that's kind of like the idea. Of the half and whole dollar breakouts. Watch. I bought just under it. 40 to 48. And then sold 52. For 4 cent breakout. You know not the biggest breakout. But if you if you push the size. You can definitely see some big winners. 75. Break of 5 days is going to come. Nope. And then. The next setup that comes after that is that it breaks 50. Watch a dip off of 350. So it breaks 50 and then um, it holds 50. It, you just rewatch this video and you're going to see how that thing held for the longest time. But then I hesitated on, on punching the buy button and then it ripped. I kind of like chased it and paid the price. And then here I, I jumped. The last loser you just saw it was me jumping for the break of 375, which is high of day. Um, clearly, it didn't happen, so I had to cut it loose very, fairly quickly. But um, yeah, this is kind of like part of the part of the live trading archives, I guess. All right, so before we continue, let's go through the disclaimer. Um, my results are not typical. Please make sure you guys trade in a simulator before you, before you put your hard-earned money on the line. 
there's no reason why you guys should be following me or following anybody else or trading with real you know real life money if you don't know if you're going to be profitable so please make sure you're trading a simulator remember trading is risky you know what screw the recap these things are moving let's see if we can let's see if we can catch some trades over um 375 here here's my pnl also um i wouldn't i wouldn't go under under two thousand dollars on the day so that's kind of like my risk on the day I I I'm I'm happy to risk a couple hundred bucks, but um I wouldn't go below two thousand. If I get close to that, that would be my st my stopping point. That's the break of five day right there. Watch again over eighty four now. Big seller that are 80. Can we take that seller down? And then as soon as we take the seller down, can we rip through 84 again? This thing is also creeping up. But the problem about this thing is that the hold levels are so close that it's very hard to trade it. Watch this. There's a break. Over 85 again. Can we try again? It's Mighty's dialed. Mighty's dialed. Mighty's always dialed. This thing is blinding the crap out of me. Are we going for 3k? Are we going for a 3k day, huh? We're not. Why? Because we don't trade the PL. If this thing continues to show opportunities, if this thing continues to show my edge, I'm always going to make myself available to either pay my expenses or collect my profits. Who cares about the PL? I'm just going to continue to trade my edge. If this thing wants to go to four, well, great. I'll try my best to ride it all the way to four. Also, the break of higher day on this thing could, could get immediately halted up. Um,. But you know, holding into holds so tricky. I I really don't like doing that. Eleven twenty one. That's the time here in the Pacific Standard Time. But um, let's see this thing. Hmm. All right, let's see. Here we go. Watch. Can we see 84? Can we see 84, 85? The so break of 85 and then a snap all the way to 90. Once we get it to the 90s. Once we get into the 90s. You know, the, the, the break of 4 is very likely. You know, and that's what kind of like I do to start off a trade. I kind of like take stabs with small size, kind of like to test the waters. Um, kind of like dipping my toes into the water and saying, okay, do I like this price action? If I like it, I add for like the bigger move. And if I don't, I just get back out. It's a, it's a, it's a small size starter position. So getting back out with it is not, is not a, that big of a deal. Okay. Um. So let's put I like on a side chart here. Let's grab this, set an alarm here, just in case. And uh, let's get into the recap now. All right, so green, a nice green day again. It kind of almost feels like I've leveled up once more. You know, a lot of people think that when you turn the corner, that's the end of the road. You finally made it to the other side and you can live happy ever after, but that's not true. Turning the corner is just the beginning. It's just the beginning of what of what really day trading is. Um, so, you know, first I turned the corner with small money, making 10 cents a day. And actually 10 cents a day, not per share, a day. A dollar a day, two dollars a day for a couple of months. Then I increased my share size. All right, now I'm making 70 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Nice. Then I increased my share size 500, 600, 700 days. 
and now here is like another level. Twelve thousand dollars yesterday, five thousand dollars on Friday, almost three thousand today. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> you know. But um, let's go through the quick recap and um, let's see what we can make happen. All right, so I'm gonna kind of like rush through them because this is gonna be a video maybe focused more on live trading rather than a recap itself. But um, let's see, AMTD. AMTD, man, I it's kind of like shameful that I'm this much in the red on a stock that went up like, what, 300% today? Man, I, I, I'm always wrong with these percentages. Why is this saying only 95%? There's no way. See, 500%. I guess this doesn't take account um, the, the pre-market move. So just during the open, just the, the moment it, it opened, or from the or from yesterday, I don't know, but it made like a three hundred percent move pre market, and um, since yesterday, which is insane. Um, you know, I didn't trade all of that, you, as you guys probably know. I am a, I am in the Pacific Standard Time, so I wouldn't be here sitting at four a.m. for this type of stuff. It just would ruin my schedule on my on my normal day too much. So you know, I usually don't trade pre market, and this thing's holding up again. Watch if the whole level moves up. Whole level needs to move up. I wouldn't trade it right there because there's literally the whole level is working is is trading as resistance right there. If you can move up though, it's a different story. High fifty four. Can this thing move up? Move. Fifty two. Is it gonna move up? Is it not going to move up? Okay, in any case, let's continue to do the recap. So this thing was moving in with sympathy with HKD, which went all the way up to $2,000 per, per share, or even more right now, which is absolutely insane. Look at this, a high of 2.5K Per share, look there, the whole level moved up a little. Um, well, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm throwing in the towel and, um, you know, I won't trade here until I finish with my recap. So this thing was insane. And then I think AMTD owns this company. So that's why it was moving with sympathy on it. And, you know, I missed the entire pre-market move. I came here around this time. And I was just ready to trade. I didn't have FOMO because of this move. I know that I usually don't trade pre-market, so it's not something that I missed because I just never traded. So I didn't have a lot of FOMO because of that. But you know, first it starts tanking, 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 tanking. I buy the dip around um, 850. I was red for a little bit. This was only with 250 shares, by the way. And then I was able to have a nice, crazy win. On just 250 shares, I was almost up a dollar a share. And then I was green, like $250, $300 on this stock to begin the morning. And I'm like, wow, that's some crazy volatility right there. And then I proceeded to give everything back on this red to green. On this red to green right here, this thing started to move up. And, you know, I got caught on some big flushes. I, I, I attempted the break of 10 right here too many times. Like I bought it here, stopped out. Bought it here again, stopped out on the micro pullback. Bought it here, maybe anticipating it, didn't didn't see it happen. And, you know, went red on it. Then I tried to buy the dip right here. I got flushed on, and I just went red on the name, and then I gave a lot of profits back. And I'm like, yeah, this is too much. APDN, this is the one um, that's been holding up. Unfortunately, the hold levels on this stock were very tight, but I was able to do nicely good on it at the beginning on these couple of setups. One minute pullback, ABCD tight ABCD. And then you know I was I was never holding into a halt, but um I was I was you know I got some nice trades on that. Um, I lag. This is the one we just traded live. Honestly, I was red on this at the beginning, as you probably saw, probably probably red at around a hundred bucks. I was forcing some trades on this around this zone right here, in which it didn't have a lot of volume. So reading the tape was a little trickier. Now that it, the volume really came up and it started really opening up, it was it was easier for me to read the tape. So that was that. 
Um, I lag. L N F A. Hello. Please say my mic has been working. Oh my god. Hello, 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 hello. Man, fucking crap. Are you working? Ah. Ah, hello. Oh my god. Is it working? <laughs> I hope so. Um, LNFA is what we call a mistake. OST. This one was nice. And um, this one hit was hitting the high day momentum scanners out of nowhere, and I quickly jumped into it. I jumped for the break of three. Right. No. I think at first I jumped for the break of two fifty. Then I rode it all the way up to three. Sold. And then I took another nice straight through three, which was where? Here, on this wick. It did a nasty false breakout. You know, that's why I was a little bit more hesitant on, on the hold of fall dollar levels because sometimes they're not holding and they, they're flushing like that. But in any case, jumped break of three, then jumped again for the break of high of day and rode it all, all the way up to 339. Some nice trades. You know, some big gains on that. Um, that just came up with high of day momentum scanner and the strategy behind those is like, we're in a hot momentum type of market, at least type of week. So everything that starts breaking, bre you know, breaking out and have the momentum scanner, just jump to it. Obviously have a game plan in mind, like, okay, I'm jumping for the break of three, stops to 90, profit on the, on the other side of three. You, you won't just blindly buy it or follow anyone uh, because trading is risky, my results are not typical. So please don't follow me nor anyone, no, nor anyone, anyone else, but you know, if you if you see a hot stock hitting the higher that momentum scatter, try to find an entry because it's probably going to squeeze squeeze for a little more. Then wait for the first pullback. Try to take that, and if not, just wait for a nice consolidation. But make sure the consolidation doesn't mean that people lost interest on it, because if you see consolidation with low volume, that's tricky. If you see consolidation with high volume and and you feel like a lot of people are still watching it, then that, that might be a good trade. You know. You, you buy a wedge when it starts to break out, the stop under the wedge, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that was that. PGY. PGY, I'm red on it. You know, it started squeezing here through high of day. I took a trade and the spreads were just too big. And with TD Ameritrade, given that I need to buy market and sell market, usually if I, if I want to have some someone quick fills, I was just buying the ask and selling the bid, and that spread was just too much. I quickly realized that my fields were not great, so I just left it alone. QRTEB, kind of like same story with um, PGY. REV, this one was a little bit painful because I, let, I gave a lot of profits back on this. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with my trading, but sometimes I like putting the bid out on a, on a support zone. I did that. I it was green, like almost a thousand dollars at this point on this name. I put a bid out down here for a thousand, two thousand shares. You know, in, just in case this thing flushed, I wanted to buy a quick dip buy off of support. We had a daily support. We had pre-market highs and we had the whole dollar support of 10. By the way, this thing is absolutely ripping. Give me a sec. Hey, MED. Break of break of two. Well, here we go. So you know this is kind of like the way I, I approach higher day momentum stocks. They hit the momentum scanner. They get my attention. I pull up the level two. I see the spreads. Oh man, maybe I got a little bit too aggressive there for the break of two. But in any case, I follow the level two, I see the spreads. And um, if I like it, then I just try to find an entry. The entry here, the only entry here is to buy high and sell higher. So then the, the trade there was was an anticipation of the, um, of the $2 breakout. As you saw, we did not get it. And um, because I had a little bit of a bigger winner, and because I bailed out when I saw that the breakout didn't happen, it's only a small loss, $5, who cares? 
But um, that's kind of like the idea, tra tra trading higher day momentum scanner stocks. It's pulling up, it's moving fast. All right, where's the next half whole dollar level? Let me jump in for a quick break or bail trade. REV, TEOP. This, um, another mistake. And VRAX, this one was a nice mover on Friday. After a massive sell-off, it gave a nice move on Friday. And then today, I went long. At least, I tried to anticipate the break of 14. I went long for this one minute pullback right here. Clean one minute pullback. And then, I bought like in this week, and in this week, and in this push. Trying to have a starter position to get to get well positioned for the break of $14. Um, as you can see, that did not happen. And I gave a lot of profits back on that. So, you know, that's that. You know, solid day. What can I say? I'm definitely grateful for this day, hey, MTD. Is this thing curling? Nope. Also, look at this, man. You might get another trace on this. It's moving with some might. So, you know, the, the dip buy is gone. The dip buy off of support, almost to the penny is gone. The entry was down there. So now the only option I had to trade this is going for the break of high of day. Why high of day? Well, usually because at the high of day levels or at very obvious line, line in the sand levels, uh, the breakouts are very likely to happen. And that doesn't mean that there won't be a false breakout. That means that at least a breakout, breakout is going to happen. Why? Because long bias traders like myself jump for the break of high of day. People that are probably holding from the lows don't sell anything until high of day breaks. So they might even add a high of day. And then short sellers that are short with a stop over high of day are forced to cover. They create buying volume. We create buying volume. Maybe the algorithm see that. They get out of the way. And just like that, off we go. Watch this. Here we go. High of day is 84. Can we break 80? And can we then break 84? And then if we do that, can we go all the way up to 4? Oh. That's a late fill. Come on, man. Think or swim. You know, but this is this is the deal with market orders. There's not a lot you can do about it. Well, I feel like I punched it before that breakout, but you know, my order was just out there. Then it comes flashing back down. I get a, I get a, I miss the breakout, so I'm forced to just bail out on it. Hmm. Break of 390, then break of 4. Not looking too bad. Alright, can we see break of 4 then? High 95. It's getting kind of weepy up here. Not the best sign. Um, some big sellers are popping up there on the level two as well. I reduce size, uh, as you probably noticed. And um, to the depths we go. That's a that's a crazy dip. And um, well, the day's over after that. <sighs> but yeah, that's gonna do it for the recap. $2.6 thousand dollars, I'll take it off the table. Definitely grateful for today. And um, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. You know, live trading archives kind of like happen through the video. Um, okay, okay, I'll show you, I'll show you another trade. This, this is one trade I do remember that I want to show you. It was a pretty nice trade. By the way, in the meantime, take a look at that, um, at that um, disclaimer.
Okay, I gotta show you this dip buy. It was nice. Please like, by the way. Subscribe. Alright, so watch this. I know the chart is kind of chopped. I need to fix this. But watch this one minute pullback holding BWAP. This is APDN, a couple of minutes after the market opened. And, um... I know the level 2 is kind of chopped up in half, but, you know, we're, I need to fix this. I know, I now will for for tomorrow. But for now, look at this. Look at this trade. It's a nasty trade. So, I went long, started here at the lows. And this is being a little bit of a bounce off of VWAP. It starts to bounce. And I am going to quickly add for the break of 150. Now, it's bouncing with some might. I added for the break of 250, 150, and then there, 54, 55, I sell it. Boom, nice trade. And then it holds up, or well, at least it tries to. And then here, watch, I'm gonna take another trade. It's forming a little bit of a flat top. Flat top breakout, right here, over 164, is the pre-market pivot. Watch, 164, long 164, get some nice resolution and this is some nice breakouts especially because of the price range on this on this price range i can easily take four thousand shares like it's nothing and to see those type of breakouts that put me nicely into the driver's seat to begin the day but okay that's the live trading archives um you know another big green day of course grateful and um i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys are green but um yeah crazy stuff Crazy stuff happening in Mighty City, for sure. In any, in any case, take it easy. Remember, always show up. Always fight with all your might. Because in a game like today, in a game like this, consistency and discipline is what truly matters. So um, take it easy, everybody. Till tomorrow.